Hello everyone, NadLabs here. Today we're going to be making these caves in the Godot game engine, version 3.2.3 stable. And I'm just going to show you a couple examples here. So you can see that when I uh, refresh the scene, I get a random cave. But if I click a certain button, I can remove some of these blocks around and I can make much more organic shapes. And of course, if you play around with the parameters, you can obviously get some different shapes and really interesting caves. So um, that's all I have to say. So let's get right into making this. That looks like a music note. So as you can see, this scene is very simple. All we have is a game scene and a tile map. And in this tile map, I have these two tiles. And you can see over here in my assets, they're just PNGs that are fully black or they're fully white and they're 8x8. Eight eight. If you're wondering how I made these, I literally went into paint and I went over here to resize, pixels, uh, get rid of that, 8x8. Eight eight, and I zoomed in and I'll just fill it in and then I'll save it. Of course, I don't need to save this because I already have them. So those are my tiles. How did I load them into my tile map? I went over here to the tile set and I just dragged and dropped them. You can see I already have it. And I basically said, um, let me just uh, make a new single tile. And I just dragged across that area. If you're wondering why yours, uh, if maybe you're doing this and you don't have these uh, purple lines, it's actually because I went over here into snap options and I actually changed it from 32 by 32. Instead of that, I went to eight by eight and I was able to get that uh, single tile that I was looking for. And after that, I just made the collision box. Oh, I just made a collision box over it. So I would just go like this. So, I, so you can see there's no collision box right now. So then I would just drag over it and I have my collision for my black tiles, which are my walls in this case. For my white tiles, I just have, um, uh, I have no collisions. As you can see, there's no collisions here, but there is a region. So that's, that's all I really did for that uh, tile map. And then you also have to make sure the cell size is eight because otherwise your blocks would not look very nice on that tile map. And that's, that's really all I did for the tile maps properties. Now let's get into coding. So to add a script to your tile map, you're basically going to click this uh, green script over here. You're going to click create. I already have it. So I'm going to click load. And all I have are these variables. So um, of course, we're going to extend tile map because that's what we're putting the script on. And we're going to be saying export variable width, height, full percent, number of blocks nearby, and maximum number of blocks nearby. I'll explain these two, these three later on. But right now, what's important is the width and height. What is the width and height? Well, the width and height is actually the bottom right corner of your tile map. So let's say you're doing an eight by eight or you could do four by four, one by one if you really wanted to. And you can see that over here, it says 127 by 74. You wanna make sure it's, um, and of course I'm just pointing to the bottom left. So over here, you can see when I go to the bottom right of these purple lines, so this bottom right corner, it says 127 by 74. That is the size or how many uh, boxes there are on the X axis, 127 and how many boxes there are on the y axis, 74. But I want to do a little bit over that, so 128, right? 127 plus one is 128, and 74 plus one is 75, and that's all I really need to put in here. Because when we're looping over them, we wanna make sure we hit the wall as well, so we just have to make it plus one. I'll show you what happens when we don't, so not a big issue. Then we have our filled percent, is how many blocks do we actually want filled in? Number of blocks nearby and number of blocks uh, we have minimum and maximum. Um, I'll explain that when we get to using them. So when we're making a cave, what do we really have to do? We have to do three things. We have to randomly fill everything in. We have to make the caves and then we have to make the walls. Of course, you can do this in any order, but I really think this one works out. So we have a random fill function here and I just uh, put in all these functions. So we have a random fill function. What do we, what do we really want to say? What we want to say in random fill is we want to say, okay, if this uh, random number is greater than or less than something, we want to fill it in. If it's not, then we won't fill it in. And we basically want to do this until we get a randomish, not checkerboard exactly, but just random pattern of black and white squares. So that's all we're going to do. We can basically say something like 4x in width, 4y in height. Well, this means we're basically going to be looping over this entire uh, box. And we're, we're going to be saying, if the random float is greater than the fill percentage, set the cell equal to zero. If not, set it to one. Well, what's zero and one? Well, if we go over here, you can see this one over here. This means a black tile and this zero means a white tile. So we're basically saying if the, if this random float, which by the way, returns a random number between zero and one, like so 0 0.376, whatever. So if that random number, where is it? Over here. If that random number, if it's greater than 0 0.56, we're going to make it white. If not, we're going to make it black. So um, it's not much simpler than that. So uh, if we run the scene right now, so I click F5 to run the main scene and you can see we just get black and white squares. Uh, nothing too impressive, but uh, we're getting there. 
Now we're going to have to make the walls because if you can see these outside edges, they they allow a player to pass through and into the unknown. So we don't want that to happen. We just want the player to stay inside these walls, and that's a good thing. So how are we going to do that? Well, we could easily say something like four x in width. So we're just going to be looping over this uh, four x in width. We'll just be like this, and we're basically going to be saying um, set cell uh, x zero one. What does that mean? So let me just get rid of this so you don't think it's already there x01 so we're obviously going to be saying x so x increases like there's going to be 0 1 2 3 so this is ever changing zero means on the zeroth position so you can see if i move my mouse up here you can see that the y-axis is actually um zero and that's actually what it takes in so set cell takes in an x and a y and this x and a y and this tile integer is actually what we're placing in here so we're saying keep placing it on the x-axis but always set it onto this constant y-axis and always make sure it's black and the same thing over here, we're going to be saying x height minus one, because we want to get it on that exact spot. And we're going to be saying always set it to black. Same idea for the height. We're basically going to be saying go down this column and you can see that the x axis never changes. Yeah, because it's always zero. And we're going to be saying over here is zero for the x. We're going to set the cell, which is at the zeroth x axis and the y, y position on the y axis. Would, and because this number is always changing, it'll be like one, two, three, four. And if I go and if I go over here, you can see it will be like zero, one, two, three, four. I'll just be going over this area, and obviously at the other end, over here, it will just be going over here like this as well, and it'll just be filling them in. That's a way I can explain it. If that didn't make sense, please let me know in the comments. Uh, we're basically just making a box, and if we run it now, you can see that we get our box around it, and that's good because now the player can't leave. But how are we going to make this really chaotic mess a set of understandable uh, caves and something more organic and natural. Here's where the make caves function comes in. This is what it looks like, but before you get scared, I'm gonna explain it. Remember this example, we're basically going to be saying, look at a square, okay? Look at one of these caves and count how many cells near it are filled in. So we can see if get cell, x minus one, y minus one. So x minus one, y minus one goes up because y uh, decreases while going up, which is opposite to what you learned in school. So what is this type of cell? So if this uh, cell is equal equal to one, which means it's equal to black, this cell is not equal to black. So we're gonna add one to our count variable, which we declared up here. Then we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to be doing it for this one, then this one, then actually this one, we're gonna exclude ourselves, go over here, 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 and we're just gonna be counting uh, how many of these are black so we're going to see over here we have one two three black in this uh nine by nine by nine square so that's important so we can go over here and we can see if our count which is three black squares is less than the number of blocks nearby which by the way is defined as four then we're going to be saying set the cell equal to white because this statement is not true we're going to leave it black but if that count was going to be applying over here uh, on this square then we can see one two three four five six and let's just say this uh, square was already uh, filled in so you have six and seven so you can see we have seven black tiles around this center tile we're basically going to be saying if this count which is seven is greater than or equal to number of max number of blocks nearby seven then we're going to be setting that cell to a black one and because it's already black we'll just uh, leave it as is but if it was white then we would set it to uh black basically what this is trying to accomplish is we're saying if there is not a lot of cells nearby, which are your color, stop being that color. And it's basically like, it's kind of like peer, peer pressure. You're basically saying to this black square, if you're, if the neighbors around you or these squares around you are white, then become white. Or if we're saying to these black cells, or if we're saying to these white cells, if the neighbors around, uh, if these uh, squares around you are black, then also change your color to black. And that's how we can make seem some caves. So this uh, this uh, nested for loop is basically going around these squares, and it's basically saying uh, we're basically going to be get the, we're going to be getting the count of how many black and white cells there are nearby, and we're just going to add one if it's black, because remember black is the number one tile, and of course you can name this to make it more uh, uh, easier to understand, and of course I'll do that. So this will obviously make a lot more sense. If that cell, if we're getting that cell, and get cell actually just returns the index of the cell, so it'll return what type of number it is is it a zero or is it a one and it's going to be saying uh if it's equal to a black tile which by the way is just the variable one if it's equal to the black tile then we're going to add one to our count and when we run this you can see that it looks like uh it looks more cave-like and i can actually prove this uh that this function is making that happen because 
If I go comment it out in our ready function, make case, not go to line number, but comment it out. And if I do a little bit, if I add uh, one more block of code, and here I just added uh, one more block of code, which basically says if uh, I click the UI end button, which is just uh, the end button on the keyboard, or if I click the home button on the keyboard, um, make uh, uh, execute this function. So we're going to restart them or make sure the caves are made. And now if I click F5 to run the scene, you can see that when I click the, let me just double check. If I click, if I click UI end, if I click UI end, I should be restarting the scene. But if I click, yeah, let's check it out. You can see I'm restarting the scene. And if I click UI home, you can see that I'm able to make caves. And now I'm getting a lot more organic shapes. And of course you can play around with these parameters. I found these parameters look or work really well. Um, but you can see that if I save the scene, you can see that when I restart it, I get a whole different set of parameters. Just because I changed this from three to four, I'm getting something entirely different. If I change this from, let's say four to maybe six, I think that also works really well. Yeah, this is a lot more dense caves. And obviously um, this will be a little bit harder for your player to navigate in because let's say you have a piece of loot over here, then that loot will forever be gone because that player can't mine unless you give them the ability to mine walls, which I actually have a tutorial about if I remember to link it up in the top right, wherever it is. But yeah, you can see that I'm just getting these caves and it's a really simple process. And oh wow, because I did that, it appeared over there. Okay, whatever. But um. Yeah, this is really all we have to do to make caves. And you can see the walls don't get destroyed ever, um, which is a good thing. But if I change, if I mess around with this fill percent, so yeah, I think this is good and I'll just bring in a player. So I'm not gonna go over the player because the player is really, really simple. Like it is one of the simplest scripts you can ever write, which is just a kinematic body 2D, collision shape, uh, sprite, collision shape, camera 2D, and we have our player over here, it just has speed, and we're basically telling in our physics process function, uh, get a, a velocity, and that velocity is just going to be equal to our directions. So if I'm clicking right, go right. If I'm clicking left, go left. And by the way, this actually sets it up so that if I'm clicking right and left at the same time, I don't move because that kind of makes sense. If I'm going left and right, I'm not going anywhere. And you can see I spawned at the top left because I just instanti instantiated my player over there. Let's just say I just put the player over here for some reason. So you can see that I'm inside the map and you can see I'm stuck inside of something. But when I click that home button, home up button, you can see that I'm able to now move around in these caves. And of course, I can't see the entire cave just yet, but you can see that it's it's like something that a player can move around with. And you can obviously add enemies and fill that in with black squares or just make the background black by going to your environment under rendering and just setting it black. And you can see that when I save it, nope, when I refresh the scene, if I can ever get to the edge, um, it's black. So now it looks like I'm stuck inside a cave. And really, that's all there is to it to making a um, a fixed cave size. Now you can't you can if you want to uh, procedurally generate it, but um, uh, that's beyond the scope of this video. And that's all you have to really do to make a a simple cave system that a player can explore and run around it. And I hope you enjoyed this. And thank you very much for watching. Actually, I want to add uh, one more thing. It's that of course this looks really bad. It kind of looks like I'm in like a terraria. I can fly around and stuff but if you decrease this uh, block size or if you increase the player size uh, then it'll look a lot more cave like like um, it'll look uh, it'll look a lot more cave like if you uh, decrease the block size and you increase the player size but I'm just doing this as a demo just to get an idea of what it feels like to run around in a little cave so that's really all I have to say now thank you very much for watching Well, how are we going to do that? Well, we could easily say something along the lines of for x and width, for y and what? Well, oops. For x and width and for y and height. Um, we're basically we're going.